Hello, welcome back to PlayStation Access. My name's Nathan. I'm here with Rob. Hello. Rob, you're about to show me a game you've been playing called Horizon Zero Dawn. Just a little game, yeah. And specifically, uh, this is why it's far deeper than you thought. You in this case meaning me, because I didn't know either. I think everybody. I mean, it's incredibly surprising how deep it is. Mm. Um, the first way... It's way deeper than I thought. Uh, <laughs> how involving the side quests are. Okay. And uh, having played and loved The Witcher 3, Nay, oh. you'll know the value of a really deep, involving and interesting side quest. I'm still doing them. Quite yeah. often you get games where, big open world games, and they have side quests that amount to little more than fetch, fetch and carry missions. And yeah. you go through the side quests and you realise they're all just different variations on the same thing. Oh, Not certainly. so in Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, this is just one example. These are trials that you can do. Um, each trial has a different uh, target. For hi Here we have to shoot strider canisters using fire arrows, and if we do it within 40 seconds, we get the best reward. This is Dave playing. He's not managed to do it within 40 <laughs> seconds. Poor, poor Dave. He's still got a decent enough uh, reward for that. But this is just one of many different types of side quests you can do, and these right. are really cool, these trials. They make you do specific things, like, and, they, and that doing that teaches you amazing tactics to use when you're doing combat in the actual main game. Does it do a similar thing to The Witcher, which was I, I got a real sense of the world that they were building through the side quests that they that, that they kind of fleshed out the game with? That is exactly what I was going to go on to talk about. I mean, uh, these trials are not side quests in the traditional sense. They're kind of like extra things you can do outside the story that yeah. enable you to practice combat and things like that. Um, there are more traditional side quests you'll, where you'll just be wandering around the map. Aye, aye, I mean, aye. look at this. Let's just, let's just pause for oh. a second and look at that. Um, and you'll come across like an exclamation mark on the map and that signifies a quest giver yes. and they will you know, begin by saying, oh, I've lost this, or can you go and find that for me? Um, this is a bandit camp right now. This is another, another thing you can do. <gasps> uh, ancient ruins like this, you can you can see the kind of remnants of our old civilization there in this hollowed out shell of a building that's been Man. reclaimed by nature. And uh, bandits like those places. Yeah. And uh, I really like going around hiding in bushes and uh, headshotting bandits with a bow and arrow. Man, it doesn't matter what game it is. This kind of, I mean, it is something that's in The Witcher. It's in, like, but it's also like a Far Cry thing. Yeah. It's, in, it's in loads of those sorts of games. I really like it. And the idea that there's like a fresh twist on it, doing it in an old skyscraper. That sounds cool. It's great. Um, so, yeah, you can do the trials. You can do uh, bandit camps that I'm doing here. And uh, we were talking about traditional side quests, uh, which kind of merges with point number two. Uh -huh. This is point number two, and that is uh, the dialogue options you have. Okay. Okay. Um, so, for instance, if you're in a side quest and you have to do a specific thing, you you do have a choice over how that side quest will conclude. Like the side quests are very, each one I've played so far has been very unique and mm. has been its own like little mini story, its own mini 20 minute to 30 minute story, and it's felt really satisfying. And like you said, has helped build up the world and the story that they're trying to create. And you can push further with story when it comes to dialogue options. Like you're talking to guys like this, you can kind of carry on with the conversation right. and continue the story, or you can probe deeper and ask them about their cells, ask them about backstory and lore if you want to. And, and is there an element of like, with Aloy, is there an element that you can, I mean, obviously there's going to be certain things that she can and can't do, but can you kind of bring something to her character? Can you? Are there kind of moral choices and stuff yes. you can make? Yes, I mean, I th we're going to see it in a sec here. Um, occasionally you'll get a choice and you have to p pick between uh, the heart, which is like the loving option, right. the brain, which is like the intelligent option, or the fist, which is like the <laughs> screw you option. Um, but also, I was, I was not going to uh, spoil any specifics, but I did a side quest the other day, which I haven't captured because I did it before we, we did this video. And uh, at the end, you have to make a choice um, between either making a character go with another character or asking them to leave that character alone. Right. And the game suggested very heavily implied that the ramifications of that choice could really come back to bite you later on if you make the wrong choice. Oh, really? But the right choice isn't very clear. Um, so I it's, like that. it's very much like The Witcher in that you will make choices that you think are, are right and good yeah, and it'll yeah. turn out that that person who you helped, who you thought was good, really wasn't such Real a good person Real life comes to all. get you. Do you know, if there are... I mean, I don't want to bang on about The Witcher 3, but it's, it is one of the best games on PS4 and if there are lessons to be learned from it, I'm glad these are the lessons that people yeah. are learning. I mean... So the side quests and the dialogue wheels here, you, the dialogue options are so deep. They're way deeper than I thought they'd be. They're mass effect levels of, of depth mm. with uh, where you can push conversation. Like this is a guy here who's given us a specific side quest. 
um, he's asked us to just go and find a bunch of stuff that he says has been stolen from him. Right. Um, I won't, I'm not going to spoil what happens, but the side quest turns out a little differently to his version <laughs> of events. And uh, so we're going to see it in a second where you can you can choose to respond in three ways to him. But it's just really exciting that you don't have to just run around. Look, here you go. We've got the uh, the loving option, the clever option, or we've got the uh, the fist. fighty option. Dave's uh, Dave's wimped out and gone with the loving option there. Were you mostly <laughs> fist? Is that how you... Um, no, I got, I'm going for practical approach, the intelligent approach usually. Mm. Um, but it's great to play a game where you're not just repeating the same kind of fetch and carry quests over mm-hmm. and over just to grind for experience. Everything is is building the story. Everything kind of feeds back into everything else, and it's really, really exciting. And this is point three, which we're on to, uh, which is building your character, like a really important point in any, in any RPG. Yeah. Uh, this is the skill tree. You've got three sections. Uh, Prowler is like stealthy abilities, brave, more combat-focused abilities, and forager is your ability to forage things from enemies and the landscape. Yeah. And, well, uh, so these are, the, I mean, obviously the, in determining these trees, you kind of, you can select a build almost on, on the fly with, yeah. with Aloy. What did you spend most of your, are you more of a prowler? We can see from this that I am <laughs> I more of a prowler. That. I mean, I do like sneaking around in uh, in in the bushes and headshotting <laughs> people with bow and arrows. The other thing you can do to build your character is you can modify weapons and your outfits as well. And the cool thing about this is you can buy an outfit that's uh, that's the Silent Hunter outfit I've got there, which nice. increases my ability to remain undetected. Looks like you've um, got tassels. You can also put mods into the slots there. I've got a plus 7% stealth weave. You obtain these mods stealth weave. off enemies. Right, you can okay. buy them from merchants, but you can you can loot them from enemies as well. Um, you can also have outfits that increase your resistance to melee damage. Right. And you can have other mods like you know resist fire, resist shock. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the cool thing about those mods is when you learn a, a specific skill on the skill tree, I think it's called Tinker, you can take those mods out without destroying them. Because okay. when you put a mod in a slot that's already got a mod in it, it does destroy that mod. You can't get it back. Right. But once you learn Tinker, you can freely just chop and change mods whenever you want. Nice. So you could find yourself sneaking, suddenly you get spotted. You're like, oh, man, I've got to change to a different outfit, which has good melee resistance here. Maybe you're against an enemy that's chucking fire at you. Gotcha. You can switch out a mod slot and put a fire resistance mod in there because I did say, I was wondering how the elemental damage factored in because in the few minutes that you just absolutely had to play the game earlier on while yes. Paul was supposed to be working <laughs> I saw one of the enemies that you were fighting was susceptible to fire yeah and you can craft fire arrows as well which we're nice yeah, I mean there's so much you can do the way you can change your character's build essentially on the fly like this you can go from being a stealthy build to a a kind of tank almost yeah, soaking yeah. up the damage and you can you know you can change what weapons you're using it's so because deep in, and so flexible and how quickly can you do that because in most games that's like I'll go back to my chest somewhere on the other side of the map when you're doing it here you just press the uh, the touchpad which takes you to the menu you just go crafting or you know inve- here we go crafting and instantly you're into your weapon menu just pick a slot pick a thing to go in there and you're, you're good to go I mean the cool thing about the weapons is you can craft ammo for them from the actual weapon selection wheel okay. so as you're selecting weapons on the fly you can hold down x and if you have the uh, necessary parts you can just craft ammo for it then and mm. there without having to be bogged down through menus which is also really cool do you know one of the other talking about the kind of speed of the combat one of the things that i did notice earlier on was because i always think of you know drawing back a bow bow combat being quite um slow but yeah it seems like it's designed to be really speedy as you're getting attacked and you were dodging and jumping around and firing arrows but we're on to the next point sorry we're on to the next point which kind of leads off from the last point this is crafting which is a separate thing to modding right um crafting uh you've got traps and potions there that you can craft another thing that you'll probably be familiar with if you played the witcher you've got like traps you can lay they're almost like landmines proximity mines so you yeah. can have like a fire trap or a bolt trap or just an explosive trap you can create health potions here we're upgrading our satchels or we've got our hunter bow quiver so we can hold more arrows oh, you man. can upgrade your weapon satchel so you can carry more weapons you There's can carry tons more of items materials. and oh. you gather these items a bit like you would in far cry you kill wildlife you take yeah. their skin and you use their skin <laughs> to make bigger skin. sacks <laughs> <laughs> you put weapons in do you remember the Far Cry you could make a bigger wallet to hold more money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I mean, it's there's so much depth here. It's frightening levels of depth, really. It's so exciting. And how have you found, I guess, one of the things... See, I, I like these kinds of systems, but it, 
they can be uh, tricky to get into for from you know an accessibility point of view. So how have you found the way that this? Because famously, The Witcher Three obviously had a patch to yes. reorganise because it was <laughs> yeah. so hard. How have you found your kind of material and? It's really easy and clean. It's very clean. I mean, bang! You hit the touchpad and you're straight into this menu. You've got crafting, inventory along the top. You just cycle through those with L1 and R1, yeah. and you're straight down into the menus. There's nothing complicated about the actual mechanics of the crafting and the modding. Yeah. It's just that the depth and flexibility it allows you feels it's bewildering. brilliant. Yeah, well, that's, it's, for me, it's always as long as I can see what I need yeah. easily and then make it by pressing a button. This is the best bit now. This is point yeah, number five, right. which everything has led to. Um, so we've seen uh, this enemy here and it's got like a blaze canister on its back and you can, if you shoot that with fire anim arrows, that blaze canister will explode like that <laughs> oh. doing massive damage so point five is uh, how tactical the combat is by the way okay. which is uh, we're just going to have a lovely montage of amazing fights here because going into this game I thought it was pretty much going to be you have options you can go in stealthily or you can go in with your spear smacking stuff it's yeah. so much more than that and we're about to get charged by another one here which Oof. I didn't see behind the tree <laughs> um, each enemy is made up of loads of different parts and uh, this enemy has like a blaze canister that we've said. It's got weak point at the front, which is its eye. Um, you have to scan each enemy. And once you've scanned each enemy, you can read about them in your notebook. And that will tell you what parts they have, what their weaknesses are, where you should attack them. And each enemy has different kinds of behavior as well. So not everything will attack you straight away. Sometimes enemies will run away. And this is a good shot here. Bam, nice. Taking it down. Um, but I'm going to let the uh, the gameplay do the talking now as we, as we go through uh, different enemies and the best ways to approach them. This is a bellow back which spews fire and we're going to use the uh, the trip caster here to make it walk into a, like a trap which stuns it and then you can move in for a critical hit with a spear to take it out. I want to just jump in and just really quickly and say that one of the things I did take from watching you play that little bit earlier on and I said to you as you were doing it like this looks like that opening trailer that they showed. Yes. And I think that it is one of the things that people are going to want to know is Obviously, that trailer is built to show off the game looking as good as it can possibly look. But the way that they've designed the creature encounters and the hunting, it makes it seem like that is just, you know, the the kind of modular way that the enemies are made and the way that your different kind of tactical <clears throat> abilities will fit with them and mesh with them and each one is kind of like a puzzle. It really did seem like you were figuring that stuff out um, on the go, kind and of in real time. Yeah, that's the satisfying thing about it is you don't have to die to learn how to do it like in Dark Souls. Yeah. You can <laughs> you can scan an enemy, you see its weaknesses, and change your, your build, your tactics, your approach on the fly. So if something isn't working, if you're just firing arrows into a thing, it's doing no damage and it's absolutely kicking your ass, yeah. you can scan it, see if it's got a weakness. Um, we'll see a really, really cool fight later on uh, in a couple of minutes with uh, some enemies called Shells, which, as far as the tactical battle system goes, I think that fight will really show off the different kind of things you can do. I mean, that bellow back there, we just kind of stunned it and then finished it off with a spear. Um, these again, slightly lower level enemies. You've got heavy and light attacks. We finished that one off pretty quickly with a critical attack. Um, I mean, look at the moonlight. Do you know, I was sake. just thinking, one of the things we haven't mentioned is how good the game oh, looks, it, but it's just all over it's this just video obvious, anyway. Isn't it? Here's the shell. Right, so we've uh, crept away, equip our sh uh, shock wire. Um, but then if you go into your notebook, because we've scanned it earlier, Here's the shell. Here's all of its parts. It's got body, it's got crate holders, it's got a lightning gun, a power generator, and a shield claw. Destroying this component disables the energy shield. So uh. you've got a, I've got a specific type of ammo. Here it is, the tear blast arrow. Shooting this arrow into something, see crafting more ammo on the fly there, right. will rip that item off. So we'll just give it another little scan to make sure we're going to be targeting the right part. I think it's its... It's left, left hand, yeah. it's got the shield generator, um, so we put something into its back, that's taken its shell off. I know, it's like a little crab. And it's turned around to face <laughs> us, and it's presenting its left hand. Yeah, I, really want it, I really want your left hand so I can disable your shield. This is the cool thing, look, it starts to repair itself, oh, puts its man. shell back on. While it's doing that, we'll take off its shield generator. Okay, so now it's lost its shield generator, oh, and it's stunned. So mean. <laughs> I know, that little bit there under its belly if you can it's get that spot. that is a real weak spot and if you can tear that off that'll make the the whole shell explode um but this shell has buddies as we will see so this this battle oh, uh, man, like a pack. <laughs> it gets more complicated 
Um, so that one's not dead. So we're going to have to do a little retreat now. So what would happen if you just ran up and tried to smack it with your spear? You'd be oh, dead you, in a couple you'd be of... annihilated, yeah. Right. I mean, we will see it in a second. When, when Aloy takes melee damage, she can't take very many hits when you're being smacked she's, with a big a metal fist. She's a human, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you really do have to use everything to your advantage. Like the enemy's weaknesses, the environment in certain circumstances, you have to have the right ammo equipped. It's just such a satisfying... I don't know how this fight ends. Tactical, brilliant battle system. It's so good. Is it? Is this going to be a happy ending? It's going to be. Well, let's not spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? How do you think it's going? I don't know, man. Is it you or Dave playing? It's Dave. Is it? Oh, then I, with you, I thought there's no way you'd have put it in unless it ended well, but if it was Dave, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, Dave managed to get a good shot there on the... Look, that little bit underneath. Bang, 400 damage. Oh, We're we'll taking it out Dave. straight away. And that one's... Is that one stunned? is stunned. Go on, Dave, get in there. Dave doesn't seem to have realised that. He's so cautious. He's realised now. Running, We running. can finish that off just with one smack of the spear, but we've still got two more shells to try and take care of. Well played, Dave. See, there's its shield generator, and it's firing out these beams of energy now. So we can't... It's hard to fire off its shield generating arm when it's protected by the shield. Yeah, So you have yeah, to yeah. creep up stealthily. That was a good hit Dave got in there. Okay, so that shield generator is gone. Is this, okay. And it's exposed its belly. I mean, even the enemies are smart as well. They kind of know when their weaknesses are exposed and they will do everything they can to try and minimise that. Man, this looks... It looks, you know, like a familiar blend of things, but really different from anything that I've played. Yeah, it's so surprisingly deep and tactical, the combat. Oh, oh man, here. oh man, he's run out of ammo. ammo. Oh, we're okay, though. That one's been blown up, and now we've just got one left. He's only got a tiny, tiny bit of health. With no health. Shoot so him, Dave. Easy arrow. There In we the go. Eye. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Water. This is a Thunderjaw. Oh, he looks big. Oh, look you at might recognise him from the trailer. I was the say. Thunderjaw has an interesting thing on its back, a disc launcher, which it will use to launch horrible spinny discs at you. Think um, Krillin from Dragon Ball Z's uh, oh, mate. spinning disc attack that I can't remember the exact name of. Um, you can shoot this off. Here we go. The disc launcher is now off. He's oh, missed us. Is. And look at the fact, look at his bits just flying all over the place. That's why, that's kind of yeah. why it was so hard to believe that what we saw in that yeah. first trailer was a kind of real time gameplay. Yeah, so here's the disc launcher that we shot off, which we can now pick up and use against um, him. Oh, the wind farm. There we go. 393 damage. How do you damage. like it? How yeah. do you like a disc? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this enemy is, is far too high a level. We're. You know, we're about level 13. This thing is level 27. Still, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be here. It's doing some, some, but the some thing is, damage, if you're good enough, you can take down enemies like this. It's not like most other RPGs where if you find an enemy that is way higher level than you, you just got no chance. No, that's one of the things I've always respected about Dark Souls and, no. and the One Bros. I mean, that's ended bad for us. Oh, one. you've been. You've been we have been lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a little example, oh, and man. we'll just end. This is photo mode. You can take Aloy oh. out of photo mode and uh, just end it like that. But. Should I, the reason I'm excited about this game, Rob, is because you were playing it. We were like, oh, who, who's got time to play it this week? And Rob's like, yeah, I could probably play it a bit over the weekend. And then the messages you sent, because, you know, I've been playing Neo. Neo's great. Um, Neo's really good. But then, you know, you just sent these messages saying, Horizon's really good. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's, we all expected it to be good. It's like, but this is really, really it's, good. I think I am, it's... It's going to be joining the Uncharted and the God of Wars of the PlayStation exclusive family, oh. I think. It's so good. And uh, there are five ways it's way deeper than you thought it was. Well, it is deeper than I thought. Thank you for showing me, Rob. Thank you guys for watching. Look, if you've got any questions about um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Rob's been playing loads of it, so put them in the comments and he will take a trawl through them. We're going to have more videos up this week because um, it turns out Horizon Zero Dawn's really good. So stay tuned to the channel.